After over one month and well over 100 hours playing Sparking Zero, I believe I am ready to make this re Wait, hold on. Something's not right. And there we go. Now we're ready to make this review. After one month, over 100 hours, and one platinum trophy, I believe I am more than qualified to make this comprehensive Sparking Zero review covering all aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. From the modes to the gameplay, let's dive into this. Now I do have to make a disclaimer. As a die-hard Budokai Tenkaichi fan that dumped hundreds if not thousands of hours into that series, there's certain nostalgia I have for this series. But I will do my best to be as unbiased as I can. And there will be a final verdict at the end of the video, so make sure to watch all the way through so you understand all of my points. Whoa, 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 before we get into the review. Like the video and subscribe. Come on, I'm a small channel. What's it's a button for you? It doesn't mean anything. If you want to go above and beyond, hit the join button too. That would mean the world. Let's get into it. First off, let's cover the story mode. In story mode, what they call episode battle in this game, you have the ability to play as eight different characters in their respective battles in the story. Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, Piccolo, Future Trunks, Frieza, Goku Black, and Jiren. The idea for this on its own doesn't bother me too much as we've had story modes in the past that have split up characters this way, i.e. Budokai 3, and it's been done very well. The issue is some minor characters are missing that have fights of their own, which I would have liked to engage in, such as Krillin, Tien, Gotenks, maybe even Yamcha if you gave him a what if. Unfortunately, episode battle is where the game feels truly rushed. Not only is it told mainly through floating JPEGs with text that we have to narrate ourselves, but it's straight up missing entire arcs for certain characters. Let's tally them up, shall we? First off, we're missing the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 tournament for every single character. They probably did that because they didn't make the stage for it, but we'll get to stages or maps later. For Vegeta, they skipped his Saiyan Saga fights and every Dragon Ball Super arc. So that's four arcs total they skipped for him. For Gohan, they skipped the Saiyan and Namek Saga arcs. So that's two arcs skipped. For Piccolo, they did skip the Tournament of Power, though most of who he fought isn't in the game, so I guess I'll let that slide. For Future Trunks, they skipped his entire Android or Cell Saga arc, so that's one arc skipped. And the villains in Goku, they didn't skip any arcs, so good for them, I guess. It's interesting that Goku gets to engage in every single fight where he threw a single punch in his story mode, plus he gets three what-ifs, but these other characters were done dirty. It almost feels like they started to run out of time once they finished Goku's story. The floating JPEG style of storytelling could just be chalked up to poor direction and vision for this section of the game. Not necessarily that they rushed it, but the straight up skipped arc just feels like they didn't have enough time. And before I see somebody comment that they didn't want those fights to be redundant because you can switch into Vegeta in the Tournament of Power arc and Goku's story for example, that's no excuse. In fact, if they drowned me out with fights, I might have forgiven some of the laziness in other parts of the story. Like in Budokai 3 for example. Another game where you play as individual characters in the story mode. You could even play as Krillin against Nappa and against Frieza, and Tien against Cell. Even though those characters didn't so much fight those characters, as much as they just threw an attack at them. In Sparking Zero, however, they don't bother with those fights. And they skip story arcs for the movies and Dragon Ball GT, even though basically all of the required characters are in the game. The story mode kind of just skips some cool milestones that we can do in the fight, for example, you don't get to do a final flash against Cell unless you decide to do it yourself. And I wish it kind of forced you so that it felt more like you were actually playing the story. At least that's for me a little bit bothersome. We don't even get to engage in a beam clash with Cell at the end of the Cell games. It just resorted to a cutscene. And it kind of kills the immersion a little bit where we're either missing key moments or they're just resorted to cutscenes when they could be part of the gameplay. And one of the key things that they highlighted in terms of the marketing for the story mode was the fact that you could change the camera angles during the cutscenes, which when I first heard that, I was also swept up in the hype and I thought it was amazing. But honestly, after using it like one or two times, it really is not that interesting. In fact, the angles often look worse in first person than they do the way they were originally designed. Now let me get back to these floating JPEGs because they haven't gotten enough stick yet. How insulting that they couldn't at the very least get somebody to narrate these parts. I streamed the entire story mode and I was getting tired reading this shit out loud on my own. I thought it would be a once in a while thing to transition us to the next scene, not like 75% of the goddamn story. Genuinely, the decision to tell the story like this is a poor one, but a narrator would make it a hundred times better. And it doesn't help that the same one or two goddamn songs play over and over in these sections. Let's take Budokai Tenkaichi 3's story for example. 
by no means a gold standard in story modes. But at least when they have text rolling on the screen, they have a narrator or a character read it and tell you what's going on. This is basic stuff, people. It's 2024, people can't read anymore. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, the story mode isn't all bad. Obviously, the inclusion of what ifs and the parts where they actually have cutscenes are all pretty solid. I won't touch too much on the what ifs here because I did do a whole video ranking them that you can check out. Though I will say that they are a fun part of the story mode and it keeps things fresh and interesting while you're playing through it for the first time. Though I do feel like we're missing some basic what ifs that we've all wondered about. Like why can't we defeat Frieza as Super Saiyan Vegeta? The one negative thing I will say about the what ifs, in order to trigger about 99% of them, all you have to do is beat your opponent really fast. Ridiculously fast in some cases, which in my case led me to resorting to charging up to sparking and spamming the attack button. Not very fun or creative, and I felt that they could have found more interesting ways to trigger the what if, like hitting them with a specific attack or beating them with just your fists or something like that. Ultimately, the key question to be posed here about the story mode is, is there any replayability here? And my answer to that is, not really. Having completed everyone's story completely, including the what ifs, I have absolutely no desire to replay it. Even to hear the Japanese dub, which I love because it's just so underwhelming design-wise. Maybe I'd go back to replay a what if one day, but that's about it. Next, we'll cover custom battle mode. A huge selling point of this game and their marketing was the inclusion of custom battles, the only new feature this game has to offer. And to be sure, it's really cool. People can really let their imaginations shine here, coming up with all kinds of scenarios and storylines. Though admittedly, there are limitations. And some I can understand, but some seem misguided. The glaring issue with the custom battle creator is the lack of a good search function when giving the characters dialogue. There are over 5,000 dialogue options, and the search filters are so vague that you can't figure out where to find what you're looking for. This can make a process that should take like an hour into a fucking multi-day long project. You can't have two of the same characters in a battle, which seems like a silly limitation. If I want to pick five Brolies, let me. It's a custom battle, we're not writing Dragon Ball manga chapters here. There are only 11 non-playable NPC options and only 8 when factoring in different versions of Bulma, Chi Chi, and Dende. A pretty low number, I feel like they could have added more of Goku's friends or even some generic faces in there. You can't have the cutscenes dynamically change based on the state of your character. For example, if your character transforms during the fight and then you have a cutscene with them, they'll go back to their base form or whatever you set for them in the cutscene originally. Or, if your character gets his shirt torn during the fight, the cutscene will default to whatever costume you initially picked for them. So it leads to some disjointed flow between the fights and cutscenes that can knock you out of the immersion sometimes. Giants seem to be pretty limited in the poses they can do. You can't trigger certain things like beam clashes, which is bizarre. You can't place characters on certain parts of the map. You have to go with the predetermined locations in the cutscenes, which makes it a little hard to recreate certain scenes exactly the way you would want them to be. Like when I tried to recreate Goku vs Vegeta, I couldn't place Goku and Vegeta on rocks across from each other like it is in the original anime or manga. I had to just place them one down below on the ground, one floating up. So for me it kind of triggered my OCD that I can't just move them a little bit over so it can be exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now I will say in the custom battle editor though, there are really cool effects you can do. There are a number of different faces and poses and even screen effects that do add quite a bit to the customization of it. And besides the search filter not being there, I think there are a good amount of dialogue options. I don't really mind that much that we can't create our own words. I understand a lot of people would take that probably down a, let's just say a naughty route if you were allowed to make your own dialogue. So I don't mind that, just the search filter thing is a problem. I'm not an expert on custom battles, but I have spent a number of hours in the creator, and these are just the things that I noticed. Still, just having this feature in the game is a huge plus, and with a couple of simple tweaks, this can be an amazing mode and one where people are more likely to want to jump in to create their own battles. Just add a search bar for fuck's sakes. Next up, we're going to be covering the gameplay. The common selling point amongst the Tenkaichi or Sparking games is the abundance of characters, and this game takes the cake with 182 total characters at release. That's including all the different forms of characters, and there are more planned as DLC. The base gameplay here is very, very fun. The combos are satisfying, pretty simple, and chaining attacks together is just a blast and it truly feels like Dragon Ball when you're playing. This is the type of gameplay I've been waiting for since the last Budokai Tenkaichi game. All the characters have essentially the same combos, though the ways they attack and the animations they do make it still feel fun and unique when switching up the characters you use. 
especially because they all have three of their own unique attacks and two unique skills that can buff them or give them a temporary advantage in certain ways. The super attacks, ultimate attacks, transformations, and fusions are absolutely beautiful. Just some absolutely jaw-dropping stuff in here, and the game is certainly pretty to look at. But is it pretty to play? Honestly, for the first couple dozen hours, it was. I was so swept up in my excitement for the game that I didn't notice its flaws. And again, the basic mechanics are very fun. And still to this day, I'm having a lot of fun with it at times, but then at other times, it can be a pain in the ass. Look, if you've clicked on this video, you've probably heard people cover this a thousand times, including me in a past video or two. But as the weeks went on and people started to learn how to play the game, it became clear that there were some glaring problems. And it's baffling because many of these things were non-problems in the previous entry, so I'm not sure what happened here. For starters, Z vanishes, which is where you teleport behind your opponent as soon as they're about to hit you, is far too easy to use, and costs far too little key or energy resulting in online matches that are half fighting, half vanishing. It's very tedious and boring and can easily be fixed. Next are super counters, which are basically a block that you can time to break your opponent's combo. Seems like a good idea, except there's already a combo breaker in this game called revenge counter that costs a resource called a skill point. Those super counters cost no resource, you just need to time it right, but there's no consequence for timing it wrong, therefore you can just spam it until you break your opponent's combo making it very tedious when fighting and you are constantly dealing with this breaking up the fun of your combos. Next is Sonic Sway, a move that allows you to do a cool high speed maneuver to dodge your opponent's attack and hit them back if timed right. This one would not be an issue if you couldn't spam it whilst blocking, which you can and it makes absolutely no sense. So that needs to change as again, there's no incentive to actually learn the timing. Every character, like I said, has essentially the same combos with slight variation. So interrupting them with these easy to use mechanics makes the game very frustrating. And then Z searches, which is when you lose track of your opponent due to being hit by an ultimate or them switching their characters out and you have to relocate them, which worked fine in the last game. But with the size of the maps in this game, characters behave exceedingly stupid and blind when trying to locate their enemies. In a world where these motherfuckers can literally locate people from across the fucking planet and scouters which are literally designed to locate power levels can't fucking pinpoint someone 10 feet away. So those are things that are misguided on the mechanic side that I believe make the game less fun. And there are a few things that are abilities or skills that just need to be nerfed due to how much people spam them online, resulting in boring, frustrating gameplay. Characters who have a skill that allows them to instantly enter sparking mode is fine, though they should be inflicted with key sickness which results in them charging significantly slower like in the last game. After image strike lasts for 15 seconds of dodging every single melee attack and super or ultimate attack, far too abusable and no consequence for using it, and it lasts way too long. Unblockable ultimate attacks. Love them or hate them, I believe they shouldn't exist online. Regardless, it's far too difficult to dodge them once they're launched, and so some frames should be added after they're launched to give players a better chance of dodging them. And lastly, I think the androids just recover far too much health and grabbing. And then some personal things. I don't believe that hard knockdowns that incapacitate your character, leaving you no way to dodge the enemy's attack, except by vanishing, should be so easy to achieve. That should be reserved for getting hit by ultimates only, maybe some supers in my opinion. Beam clashes have been dumbed down in this game. No matter where you clash from on the map with your opponent, you'll be teleported to the middle of the map, which saps a lot of the fun of beam clashes for me. Want to recreate Goku vs Vegeta's clash exactly how it happened? Goku on the ground, Vegeta in the air? Sorry, not possible. The world tournament stage is far too flimsy with the out of bounds. It's too easy to just sidestep out of bounds by accident. Now I mentioned a lot of things there, and we're supposed to be getting a gameplay patch in December, and they just released a survey asking for feedback, which I will link down below, please fill it out. The more of us that fill it out, the more likely things will change. But at the time of recording, we have no idea what they're going to change. Though most of the things I've mentioned are easily fixable, so here's hoping that many of them are resolved in one month's time. Next I'm going to cover the overall features and layout of the game. Now in terms of actual game modes or features, I feel like we're lacking here. All we have is basic online and offline team or single battles, tournament mode, story mode, and custom battle mode. No raid boss mode, no enemy gauntlets, no dragon sim like in the last game. I absolutely love just playing the game offline or online as is, but sometimes you want to switch it up and have a different kind of challenge or experience. Dragon sim in the previous game did that for me. It was basically a game mode where you pick any fighter and train him or her up as the days pass. Then after a certain amount of days pass, you fight stronger and stronger fighters and it was cool and unique. This game could benefit from something like that, though I will give them. 
The custom battle mode is new and it's great to have despite its flaws. The encyclopedia mode is cool, I like the girl talk for every character. You can summon all three versions of Shenron in this game which is cool. And you've got various wishes for each, most of which honestly besides the outfits and characters are pretty uninteresting to me. But it's still, it's nice to have. The theater mode is kinda just there, it's nice to be able to save your battles to watch them over again. But how come we can't watch any of the story cutscenes in the movie section? It only gives us the option to watch the opening or the ending credits. Kinda strange. I like how many characters and outfits they have in the shop, it gives you something to work towards, especially early in the game. You can either unlock them through doing various story quests, or pre-made custom battles, or world tournament victories, or you can buy them. Though I don't like how when you exit the shop, it shoots you back to the menu instead of letting you go straight to customize. Just a small nitpick. I appreciate that they brought back ability items to buff your characters, but it's a bit of a shame that you can't make them absolutely broken like with Red Patara in the last game. I understand the online dilemma of that, but maybe just limit it to casual matches, or even just offline matches. It was such a blast in the last game. The missions and stuff are there, something to do I guess if you're really bored. And I will say, I personally do actually like the layout of the main menu, and how Goku hops from place to place in the different sub-menus. The only thing is, the music gets tiring and I wish there were a way to shuffle music in here. Which brings me to my next section. Now we'll talk about the soundtrack. Now this game has 112 songs or melodies, and that's very good. And whilst I will admit I haven't listened to every single one from start to finish, I've listened to a large portion of them, and overall, I'd say the game has a pretty decent soundtrack. Some of my favorites at the moment being Cruel Galaxy and Hope for the Future. A lot of the menu songs though I'm not too big a fan of, nor the songs that repeat in the story mode. In fact, some of them I actively dislike, like Zenkai Power. The beginning just makes me want to tear my ears out. But the ones you can pick in battles, for the most part, range from I really like them to I think they're okay. But I'm not a great judge of music. I'm the kind of guy who will listen to a song a hundred times and hate it, then the hundred and first time I go, damn, this is kind of gas, and then listen to it on repeat for the next week. Though with such a big soundtrack, why is it that there's no shuffle option? You have to manually select a song before you enter any match, or attach a specific song to a specific character. I understand that previous titles had specific songs attached to specific maps, and that could have been a way to go, but I think with the amount of songs in here, they would have been better taking the sports game approach and just shuffling the tracks wherever you are. And if you try and create a custom battle, have fun listening to the same song on repeat for the hours or days it'll take you to finish it. So soundtrack is decent, but it isn't allowed to truly shine. Now, the reason it might sound like I'm shitting on this game is not because I don't like it. I still love it. I see what it could be, and it's not far off from being a legendary game. And many of the issues I mentioned, I believe, have to do with the fact that the game feels rushed. I won't reiterate points I've made previously, but I'll point out some smaller things that I believe make it feel this way. Now first, this isn't a small thing to be fair, but we only have 12 maps in the game, not counting the day-night cycles of each map. And only one of them has a destructible outcome, that being Namek. The maps are impressive for what they are, and they're huge and the destructible environments within them are very well done. I like the maps that we have, but they clearly needed more time to add more maps. Staples of the series like Kami's Lookout, Kame House, Mount Pauzu, Glacier, Space, the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 stage, all missing. When you play online for a couple of hours, you really feel limited with the lack of maps. Certain animations in the game appear unfinished. For example, Jiren's transformation just cuts to him being shirtless, and it seems a little off. When giants are hit with attacks like a spirit bomb that are meant to have animations when they get hit, the animations are just skipped and all you get is the damage counter. The stage selection menu and character selection menu are pretty uninspired to me. Maybe not a big deal to some, but some of the best Dragon Ball games always had pretty sick and unique character selection or stage selection layouts. Then little things are left out like the fact that you can't toggle transformations on or off in the menu, you have to use an ability item to do that, you can't turn off stage destruction or the tournament crowd from running away, which is cool at first, but gets tiring when they run away at every little frickin' beam that doesn't even hit them. There's no announcer in the game, or ready? Fight! You just kinda get thrown into the matches, and I kinda miss somebody saying ready, fight, or finished, like in the last games. The world tournament mode feels a bit lazy. This is 2024. They couldn't have added a nice victory screen when you win a tournament. 
it doesn't feel much more different or special than any other basic match win. Characters will fall through the map after battles at random, grab clashes are glitched out sometimes, the screen will shake aggressively at certain angles of certain attacks, and it's interesting because there are certain things in here that seem very polished. Like for example, certain characters have unique grabs that they can perform against other specific characters to mirror the anime. But then whilst only three characters in the game have special windscreens, those being mid Super Saiyan Goku, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and Master Roshi, others that could benefit from this, like Majin Vegeta or Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, don't have anything. You see why I say it feels a little rushed? There's no crossplay in here and come on guys, it's 2024. Just fucking add crossplay. Now in terms of my experience with the performance of the game, I have personally playing on PlayStation 5 had no issues other than the bugs that I've already mentioned. My game has never crashed, the neck code seems to be good, the hitboxes are fine, only when I'm fighting people with really bad connection is it a problem, but I don't think I can really pin that on the game. But I do want to mention, because I have heard that people on Xbox do have some serious issues where the game is damn near unplayable. I don't know too much about it because I don't have any friends that play on Xbox, I don't personally play on Xbox, but I did want to bring that up because I have heard a consensus that Xbox is not in a good state, and that's not acceptable. That really needs to be addressed first before any patches come out. So free up my Xbox brothers. Besides the gameplay mechanics, there are other things that need to be fixed. For example, people can just rage quit for free and they don't get punished. You don't get rewarded for the win. So that needs to be fixed. And why is finding a casual match so difficult? If I hop into a ranked match, I can get in in like 30 seconds. If I hop into a casual match, I gotta enter a lobby first and then wait for people to be in the lobby and then maybe watch other people play their matches first before I can play. It's a little ridiculous. I don't know why this game is so geared towards ranked when it's so unbalanced purposefully, but then just make the casual mode more easily accessible. Simple. They definitely put a lot of time into writing the different dialogue interactions between the 182 characters, and it's lots of fun to hear the different lines shared between the characters. So overall, me personally, I've had a lot of fun with this game. I've also been left disappointed, however. And I'm not going to let my bias towards the series blind me to the issues this game has. I mean, just look at the amount of gameplay videos on my channel and the amount of streams I've done. I wouldn't do that if I didn't actually enjoy the game. I spent a hundred plus dollars on this, people. I have a right to complain about certain things and ask that things be better, especially when there's more DLC coming and they're going to ask for even more money. I'm not here to defend a multi-billion dollar company. So, what's the final verdict? 7 out of 10 for this game in its current state. A fun but flawed installment in the series. If you're a diehard Tenkaichi or Sparking fan, then yes, pick up the game. If not, then maybe wait and see where we're at after the December patch. This game might just rise to an 8 or a 9 out of 10. And you can be sure I'll post a video when that patch comes out, outlining the changes. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you greatly. Make sure to like it if you reached this point, why not, I'm a small channel, it would mean a lot. Hit the subscribe button, that would mean the world as well. Hit the join button if you want me to continue doing these videos long term and if you want to kind of help form the backbone of the channel. So let me know your thoughts down below guys, what you agree on, what you disagree on. I would love to have some discussions down below, but let's keep it amicable. All right, well, let's be friendly here. We can disagree and still be nice. And with that being said, I love you all. Take it easy and peace.